Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Garrett Harding and today we're doing a viewer requested video from a long time viewer and frequent commenter named Anjo. Now Anjo wants to be able to do a countdown, but they, just like I, had a serious amount of trouble finding a good countdown tutorial that didn't use some sort of the built-in version of DaVinci Resolve's countdown timers. Because with the timers, your highest number is ballpark 59, but with this tool, we can go all the way from 300,000 to negative 300,000 if we wanted to, and the time that that takes is fully keyframable. Now, in order to do this, we do have to do just a little bit of coding, but if you want to skip that and not have to do any coding, there's a link in the description down below where I turn this whole thing into one node that you can use right inside of Fusion to just add a countdown to literally any of your projects. So that's in the link in the description down below if you want to pick it up. But now that we're through all that, let's go ahead and learn how to make a countdown from any whole number to any whole number inside of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so here we are inside Resolve. We're on the edit page here. And the first thing that we're gonna do, just as makes sense in this case, is to pull out a Fusion composition. Because as you might imagine, we're definitely going to be working in Fusion today quite a bit. So we'll wait for this to load in. And we'll bring this to the beginning of our timeline. And now that we have this fusion comp, we're going to go ahead and jump right into fusion. Now you can either click on this little magic wand down here for that, or if you press shift five, it'll bring you right there without the need for this little menu. And since we only have a fusion composition in there, all we have is a media out. So normally what we would do in order to get a timer going inside of resolve is type in text plus, bring that in. Oops detach all of these all right and then we'll bring our text into our media out and we go right click in here come down to text timer and now we have a timer and if we go into modifiers we can do all this so there are a thousand videos on youtube about how to do this if you want to do this specifically you can go watch one of those this one is a little bit just better in general, I guess. So in our text node here that we already have that we just set to be a timer, we actually don't want this to be a timer because that's gonna mess up what we're trying to do. So we'll go ahead and remove that, go ahead and delete. And I know I said that we probably weren't going to be using expression today, but I found a way to do this with only one line of code. It is one phrase, you can definitely do it, okay? We're gonna get rid of this merge because it's just clutter, we don't need it. So now what we're gonna do is add in a node that I like to use as a controller node because if you don't connect a node to anything in your node web here, you can actually just use its sliders with expressions and then control expressions with basically just a controller node. For the example purposes today, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a transform node to use as our controller node. This is not the same node that I use for the tool on the website, but it's effectively gonna do the same thing. So what we need to do is figure out what one of these parameters is called. So each one of these things in your inspector panel is called a parameter. So we have the center parameter, pivot, size, aspect, angle. These are all parameters. So right down here, above where it says resolve 17 or 16 or whatever version you're on, if you look while you mouse over one of these parameters, it'll tell you what that parameter is called. So down there we can see right now, it says transform one dot size. So this is the parameter that we're gonna have our text represent. So first things first, we'll just set this right to zero because we're gonna start down and count up for this first one. And now that our transform one dot size is zero, we're gonna pop back into text and in this expression, this little code bar, if you don't have that up, again, it's just right click inside your text box, click on expression. And when you first click on expression, you're gonna get this exact thing. It's gonna be text, open parenthesis, quotations, and then a closed parenthesis. So then I'm gonna get rid of our quotes because we are not putting in like a text value, we're putting in a variable value. And that's going to be transform one dot size and transform needs to be capitalized and i believe size did as well yep right there so transform dot size so now our text right here which is this value 
is always going to represent what the number is in this box. So at frame zero right here, if we go ahead and put a keyframe and then move forward to 50 and now make our size 25, you'll see that our number changes to 25 and it will do that over time. Ooh, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe size is not the best choice here. We need something with whole numbers, I guess. All right, so we'll get rid of this transform node. And instead of that, we're going to use the set time code right here. And you get that the same way we got the text plus. You just hit shift space and then type in set time code. And here we can see we have this frames option. This is the one I used originally and I know for a fact that it works great. So we'll go ahead and make a keyframe at zero, our first frame here. So we're gonna need to update our code now to reflect this parameter. So set time code one dot TC frames. So we'll go ahead and change that right in here. We'll get rid of the transform and then we'll do set time code and each individual word here, so set time and code need to be capitalized individually. So set time code one dot TC frames. And it is case sensitive. So whatever you see down here is what you need to type into these parentheses. And so now that keyframe is set, if we move forward 50 frames again and change this to say like 10 maybe, just so that it's a little bit slower and easier to see, and then we will go ahead and move back and this should count to 10 over just about two seconds, a little bit longer than two seconds. Yep, so there we go. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right there. And it's just that easy. And because our code is calling the number in this parameter, we can seriously make this 300,000 or even higher. Like right here, you can see 300,000, we can make it negative. It's just we're going to be calling this frames and we can bring that wherever we need to bring that one to one. And then the coolest part probably is if you come into your text controls, you can still change your color. See, we can go mint green, just like that, and your font. So you can play with whatever you need to play with, and you can do your size and your position. You can still adjust everything about your text. It's just the stuff in this text box is going to be set by this parameter's number. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you do that because there are more awesome DaVinci Resolve tutorials coming your way every single week on Thursday at 9 a.m. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you do enjoy the content, please do because it does actually help me make more videos because as the channel gets subscribers, it's able to get more traction with the algorithm and then it's able to get more views, which allows the channel ultimately to grow. So make sure that you please do that. Also, um, there will be more products coming to the website soon. I'm working on those actively. I'm building all of them myself. Um, so it does take a bit of time, but there will be more products up there soon. I'm going to have LUT packs for you guys. I'm actually going to be using this microphone right here that I'm talking to, to record some sound effects for you. So that if you need like footsteps on gravel or anything like that, um, I'll be able to provide you guys with sound packs. There's just going to be a ton of stuff up there. All right. So as that stuff comes out, I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted in these videos. And that about does it for today. So until next Thursday, again, my name is Garrett Harding, and this has been how to make a custom countdown from scratch inside of DaVinci Resolve. I feel like this is the longest outro of all time.